You're supposed to be with Mrs. Pickford. Did you walk all the way over here on your own? She won't look after me unless you pay her. She told me to tell you. Give her this and tell her to keep it until I can pay her next week. Okay. Wait. Go and hide quickly. Now don't come out until I tell you. Keep up, you'll have to be replaced. I can do better, Mum. Why? Right. I've heard that before. Lost. That's not good. Where am I? England. <laughs> I know what continent I'm on. It's the streets I'm having trouble with. I'm looking for Morningside. About two miles up the road to your left. Oh, thank you. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Um, do you work here? Well, I offer a helping hand to the owner when she gets worried that she might actually have to pay to make a repair. I'd rather die than part with a shilling. You're American, aren't you? How can you tell? You're driving on the wrong side of the road. Did it fall down or did you kick it? Agnes? 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 Oh! Oh! <laughs> Murray! Oh, I, I wasn't expecting you 
until this afternoon? I took the Concord from New York. <laughs> You're finally here. Yes, I'm finally here. <laughs> well, um, you must be starving. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, tell me, how are you? Great. Really? Lovely. Couldn't be better. Miserable and lonely. Yeah, that too. <laughs> are you still chasing off every eligible man in New York? I don't chase them off. They leave. <laughs> They leave because you tell them to. When are you going to stop obsessing about my romantic failings? When you stop giving me calls to. Have you been thinking about it? What happened to us? Sometimes. For years I tried to find out who was behind it. Well, people with ugly secrets are good at hiding them. You know what I was thinking today? Tell me. I was remembering how you used to read to me at night when everyone else was asleep. And you used to sing to me. each other. But the past will always be there. The present beckons. A friend of mine is giving me a birthday party. When? This evening. This evening? But it's not your birthday. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Sanders, Lucas Kent. I wrote to you about him, remember? The architect who designed the museum in Wales. Pleasure to finally meet you. Agnes has told me you were back. Oh, well, tell me what she said and I'll tell you whether it's true. <laughs> um, self-made woman with her own hotel empire. Now, Queen Victoria had an empire. I sell beds for them. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> I bought this place after my first big commission, only to discover it was too big and too drafty. Ah, buyer's remorse. <laughs> I spent the first night tossing dried sage around the perimeter of the property under a full moon. An ancient Celtic custom? Yeah, exactly. It's supposed to bring good luck and ward off evil spirits. Oh, did it work? Yeah. Well, you are a man of many talents. Ancient rituals and interior design. <laughs> Why architecture? Why hotels? <laughs> I asked you first. Well, I could say it was a natural progression from my love of poetry and music. And that would be true, but it 
wouldn't be the whole truth. I was drawn to architecture because I... I was always trying to create what I never had as a child. Order and... beauty. My father died when I was two. And my mother and I moved from one cold water flat to another. Were more suitable for demolition than they were for human habitation. It made an impression. Well, enough about me. Tell me about you. Um, well, I was born here in England, grew up in America, bought my first hotel when I was 20, fixed it up, sold it, bought the next one, fixed, fixed it up. It up it. <laughs> exactly, here I am. End of story. You don't like to talk about yourself. We should get back to the party. You do know it's not really her birthday. Well, don't tell anyone. You know, you could have told me your name when we met by the road. You could have asked. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him. Happy? <laughs> <laughs> but when he calls you, don't do what you usually do. I came here to see you, not to run off with Lucas Kent. Even if he does have a castle. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. What is it? There's no easy way to say this. I'm I'm dying, Mary. They operated and the cancer's everywhere. Well, um, Come to New York. I'll, I'll take you to all the best specialists. I've seen all the best specialists in Europe. I won't let you die. It's you I'm worried about. I look in your eyes and I see the heartache. You haven't even visited your mother's grave. I don't know where she's buried. But why is that, Mary? You need to find out the truth about what happened to us. To you. It was so long ago. I've put it all behind me. I have a wonderful life. I have everything I ever wanted. Everything except the love of a mother. Why are you saying this? Because it needs to be said. You drown yourself in your work so you don't have to think. You don't have to feel. You don't let anyone get close to you for fear that they'll leave you. I let you get close to me. Say a word. 
<laughs> Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, Mama's gonna buy you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look favorably on the soul of our friend Agnes. May the Lord have mercy on her. Why didn't she tell anyone? She didn't want people feeling sorry for her. How long did you know her? We met when we were children. She never spoke about her childhood. Growing up wasn't easy for her. How about you? My mother died when I was very young. I never knew my father. I'm sorry. I didn't want to come here. I'm here. I don't want to leave. No one's more surprised by that than me. I want to buy it. You want to buy what? Fountain's in. You can't buy what isn't for sale. Will you do the plans for the remodel? It isn't for sale. Will you? Forgive me, my dear, if I cut to the nitty-gritty. You're sitting on a mountain of cash. Your financial advisors are saying you must invest it. Yes, as a matter of fact. Ah. And as long as you sit on the cash, there's no risk in the short run. But it won't produce a good return in the long run. There's always a catch. Of course, it would be a great hedge against inflation. I imagine the taxes are staggering. <laughs> my dear, if the taxes don't kill me, then the repairs will. <laughs> Furnace is older than God. The plumbing sounds like terrorists are trapped inside doing training exercises. And the wiring's so frayed it looks like spaghetti. I understand you've already turned down two offers? My dear, the world is full of morons and idiots. They both said that they'd start the renovations with a bulldozer. As you can see, I ran out of money. I almost went bankrupt on my first big remodeling project. Oh, there are bigger tragedies. However, it would break my heart not to see this old lady restored to her former glory. I would bring the fountains in back to her original beauty. So you say. I say it and I mean it. That's why I've retained Mr. Kent, who's known for his work on historic buildings. I'm listening. It needs new wiring, new plumbing, new heating system. These are all big ticket items. But unavoidable. My thoughts exactly. Lucas, don't disappoint me. I'm old and I'm cranky, and I don't bear upset as well as I used to. You have a deal. Well done. I meant every word. Well, I know you did. So did she, which is exactly why she said yes. So, when can you get started? Um, well, right away. Good. We can save money if we use galvanized pipe for the new plumbing, but I wouldn't recommend it. Mm -mm. We don't want sediment building up in the joints. No. So I say we redo everything in copper. That'll cost more up front. But we'll make up for it with fewer repairs down the road. Okay. Do it. I've been thinking. Why don't you come and step my place? That's very kind of you. 
Well, Agnes is gone. I hate to think of you there all alone. I wouldn't want to impose. Nonsense. It'll be my pleasure. As you know, I've got plenty of room. I need to have all the privacy you need, as well as the comforts of home. <laughs> Besides, I have a mare that's about to fall, so I need to stay as close to home as I can. Thank you. You're welcome. We need to rejig a few of the support beams when we frame the new windows. And what about insulation? It needs to be upgraded. We don't want drafty rooms. Good. And you've got your crew lined up? All ready to go when the drawings are final. Oh, you're a fast mover. <laughs> Meredith, are you happy? Why would you ask that? Because your smile never reaches your eyes. Oh, I see. So when you're not designing buildings, you moonlight as a psychiatrist. Just when I look at you, I see sadness in your eyes. I see it because I know it. Four years ago, I remember it was the first of March, I woke up and I was happy. My wife sleeping beside me. By that afternoon, my life had completely changed. My wife had gone to the doctor and the doctor told her she was going to die. Now, watching her die taught me how precious life is and how fleeting. And well, that's why I asked you if you were happy. To try and know you better. Because isn't that what everyone wants, really? To be heard. To be known. Well, to be loved for who they are. I came here to work. I understand.
you follow this one. It's all right, my dear. I know my place. I just came to offer my assistance if needed. Well, we're going to fix the cracked plaster uh -huh. and replace the crown moldings to be historically accurate. Oh, a perfectionist. <sighs> Bad habit. <laughs> Hardly a character flaw. I don't want to lose the classic feel. Great minds think alike. I missed you this morning. I woke up and you were gone. Where were... Elsa? Lucas? Well, I'm glad to see you two have developed a good working relationship. I can come back. I wouldn't dream of it. I was just on my way out anyway. I wanted to check on the, um, the, the new elms I planted last spring. Oh, yes. Mm. One must always be on one's guard against roof rot. I'll check on you later. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, you have nothing to apologize for. Is everything right? Hmm, fine. Want to go for a drink? No, I, I can't. I have a lot of work. Come on. I can't. Are you all right about last night? Yeah, I'm fine. You seem uncomfortable. What is it? I've been alone for a long time. So have I. We live oceans apart. You've been given another chance. My life is there. Your life is here. Don't do this. It wouldn't work. That's not the reason. Really? And what is the reason? You're afraid. I spent one night with you. Don't presume to know. That won't work either. What? Trying to scare me off. Bring to me only with thine eyes 
and I will play with mine. The first that from the soul arise, the last a dream divine. But my love, Job's nectar son, I would not change for my life. trying to find my mother's grave. Name of deceased? Her name was Catherine, but I don't remember her last name. I was very young when she died, and then I was adopted by an American family. I need a last name. Well, I was born here in England. There must be some sort of record of my birth. And what is your name? Meredith Sanders, but that's my adopted family's name. Well, that isn't going to help me. I need your birth name. Do you know where you were born? Waterton. I suppose you could try Waterton Hospital, although that would be a bit daft since they closed it down a few years back. I know what I'd do. What? I'd go and see the constable where you were born. Most of them are a bunch of busybodies who love to talk. He might be able to help you. Excuse me. Um, I'd like to see the constable, please. You're looking at her. Sorry. Happens all the time. What can I do for you? Well, I was born here. Not here, at Waterton Hospital. It didn't survive the budget cuts, I'm afraid. Pity. Well, and maybe you can help me. I want to visit my mother's grave. She died when I was little, and I don't remember her last name. Those records are long gone. But when your mother died, they would have called the constable out as procedure. Well, that can't be you. You're too young. No. It was Carter, if it was anybody. Is he still alive? Sort of. My name is Meredith Sanders. I wonder if you remember a little girl. A little girl you helped a long time ago. Look at your eyes. Golden as the sun there. That little girl was me. All grown up. Yes. I'm trying to find my mother. Golden as the sun. My name was Mary. Mary 
Marigold. Marigold. Pretty as a sunflower, that one. Do you remember anything about my mother? Do you remember her name? She was little. You're not that little girl. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want from me. Golden. Golden as the sun. Well, perhaps I could help you. It was such a long time ago, but... I remember, Charlie, that's my husband. He had to go out late one night to fetch a little girl. You were hiding in the laundry. I remember. It stayed in his mind. He said, he said you were a most unusual little girl. I mean, you weren't shouting or carrying on like you'd expect. You were so very quiet. And you wouldn't speak, not a word. No one could get you to speak. Well, it was the shock of it all. He took you to St. Luke's. The church? Yes. I think the good reverend is still ministering to the faithful. The sweet old dear. Hello, dear. Hello. You were at the service for Agnes? Yes. Um, I came to ask for your help. Please, ask about 30 years ago, Constable Carter brought you a little girl. That little girl was me. I never saw my mother again. She died in the hospital. And I was sent away. I don't see what any of this has to do with me. I'm trying to find her grave, and I was hoping you might remember something. I'm afraid not. Those times were hard. The parish was much bigger then. I was called on by so many people. What about records? Surely there must be some sort of records if my mother belonged to this parish. We had a fire in the basement 19 years ago. All the records were destroyed. I just want a name. Please. There is nothing I can do. Thank you. Listen to yourself, Michael. Did you hear the words coming out of your mouth? This doesn't concern you. Doesn't it? You should be ashamed of yourself. You may be a man of the cloth, but you have a lot to learn about the words of Jesus, like the meaning of compassion. Sanders? My husband is a decent man. He only meant to do good all his life. But there was such pressure at that time from the community to do something about the unmarried girls. Why are you telling me this? I have a name for you. death records are broken down into quarters. Now, each quarter is organized alphabetically into three volumes. All right? Yes. Good. You'd be surprised how many people can't follow simple instructions.
me look. I can't find her. You've looked thoroughly, have you? Every volume dating back 30 years. Well, that's very simple, then. Your mother's still alive. <laughs> that's impossible. If your mother had gone to her eternal reward, then we'd have a record of it, I can assure you. What if she died outside of Great Britain? The British Embassy always notifies us so that we can make the proper recording. That's one thing we Brits are very good at, record keeping. This has come as a shock, I see. But I am quite certain. If your mother's death certificate's not listed, then she's not dead. looking for a grave. I saw her die. She isn't dead? No. Well, are you going to see her? Why? So we can shed a few tears and vow to make up for all the lost time? Oh, don't you think you need to find out for yourself what happened? Perfectly clear, Lucas. My mother abandoned me. You don't know that. I don't? I think I do. But what I don't understand is why. So, um, I go and find her, and I ask her why. What could she possibly say that would make me feel better? What is it you're afraid of? Oh, uh, don't. You know, maybe you're afraid that you might wake up one day and actually start living. But then you'd have to forgive the people who'd hurt you. Just like I had to forgive my wife for dying on me, but... You couldn't do that, could you? You think that just because you've suffered, you have the right to interfere in other people's lives? Oh, is that lives? what I'm doing? Interfere? You, you make your arrogant assumptions about the nature of other people's pain like you're some sort of expert on the human heart, when the truth is, you don't know. I do know. I know because I'm afraid of the same thing. And right now, I'm terrified that you're going to break my heart. And that really scares me. Because you're the first woman since Anne died who's made me want to get up in the morning. fall in love with a woman who has no courage.
Can I help you? I'm looking for Catherine Stratton. I'm Catherine Stratton. Can I help you in any way? I thought you were dead. I beg your pardon? I'm your daughter. Huh. Mary? I'm called Meredith. I won't stay long. I just want one thing from you. Anything? Why? Why? Yes. Why? It was so long ago. They shouldn't have come. Mary. Please. Don't go. Um, I'd have to start at the beginning for you to understand. I loved your father. And he loved me. And I loved his wife. It was my first job interview. Oh, well, it was more than that. It was the beginning of a new life. the silvers but they'll be telling you to call the jack and amelia before the night is out i'm sure of that it's not much oh it's lovely it's everything i could have imagined and more you're free until dinner they meet you then i hope they like me don't worry they love you always been this way. No, I'm not in pain. And no, you don't have to feel sorry for me. Forgive me, it's rude to stare. You have nothing to be sorry for, my dear. Any more questions? When do I start? <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of my love affair with Jack and Amelia. I love them both. In our own way, we became a family. 
I've got to run the new gelding. He's still coming up short on his jumps. Mm. His pacing's off. <laughs> Be careful. Always. Do you ride, Kate? Oh, yes, I love to ride. Me, Mr. Eckhart. All right. He deserves more. He really loves you. His eyes light up every time he sees you. Now I can't give him what he wants. What does he want? Children, family. It's what we both wanted. You can't? No. I can't have children. It was an accident. Was Jack with you? Yes. He blames himself. But it wasn't his fault, really. My horse took a fall. I'd taken many falls. I've ridden my entire life. Only that time I didn't get up. <laughs> Who taught you to ride? My father. He's a blacksmith, so I grew up around horses. He taught you well? It always comes down to fear, he said. If you're afraid, they'll sense it. So you're never afraid? Never. Ah, uh, sit. Sit. You're not to do any work today. It's my job to cater to every whim and desire of the mistress of the house and her loyal friend. <laughs> This is for you. Do you like it? Oh, thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Do you know, I couldn't love you more if you were my own sister. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Call Dr. Patterson, tell him it's an emergency. Hurry! Pneumonia. Mm. She's very weak, Jack. She can fight it off. Where's Jack? He's in the stable. He said to go and fetch him if you woke up. Let's stay. He's not strong, you know, Jack. We grew up together. I've known him since I was nine years old. 
I know what he feels before he feels it. He loves you. I've never seen a man love a woman as much. I know. If I die... Don't say that. Don't even think it. Listen to me. What happened to me? I've made peace with it. It wasn't fair. But life's not fair. It's different for Jack. He still thinks I'm going to get better. You will get better. This time, maybe. But one day, it's going to hit him. Everything he's lost. Everything he's still got to lose. And when that happens, he's going to need something. Don't turn him away. Promise me. Come in. Jack Silver was my father. Yes. Did Amelia die that night? No, not that night. She got worse. Jack insisted on taking her to the hospital in London. He wouldn't wait for an ambulance. There was a storm that night. He lost control of his car. They were both killed instantly. He couldn't live without her, and he knew it. They both knew it.
Can I help? It's a life. Growing inside me. This does not make you happy? The father. You're not married to him? No. Surely you'll do the right thing. What is it, Craig? I'm with child. And who is the father? You're not leaving here till you tell me who the father is. Well, they won't be stood here a long time. Jack Silver. Oh, can't you let the dead rest in peace, Father? He led you astray. An innocent girl. No. It wasn't like that. I wanted him from the moment I set eyes on him. And I set about to get him. You've brought shame to my house. There's a life growing inside of me. And it's a life born of love. You tell me what shame there is in that. Look at me, Catherine. Take a good, long look. Because this is the last time you'll be looking at this face. <laughs> Marigold. Jack had died before he knew I was pregnant, so there was no mention of a child in his will. The community was so strict at that time, I couldn't even give you his name. After you were born, I took a job in the Washington Laundry. Marry love. What are you doing here? The only place that would hire unwed mothers. But we'll go and hide. And don't come out until I tell you. Come on, Art, let me see you. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. My little girl, somebody's got to see to my daughter. Got tuberculosis, Catherine. She'll be looked after. Reverend Michael came to see me when I was in the hospital. I made him promise that he would take care of you until I was well. He told me you'd be looked after. He gave me his word. I've come for my daughter, Marigold Stratton. She's not here. Could you tell me where she is then, please? She's gone. What do you mean, gone? Gone where? She's been adopted. Oh, no, there must be some mistake. My daughter's name is Marigold Stratton. The Reverend Michael brought her here when I fell ill. I know all about it. And I know all about you. There she is. Mary! Mary, it's your mother. I've come to fetch you. I told you. She's been adopted. What are you saying? That's my daughter you're talking about. I'm a mother. 
There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Where is she? You tell me where she is right now. Tell me! I'm sorry, I can't. The records are sealed. I don't believe you. If you had wanted to find me, you would have. Look at these. This has been my life, searching for you. I never stopped writing letters, making phone calls, banging on doors. I hired a solicitor, I went to the police, I went to the British Embassy. I had no idea where you were. I put ads in the paper. I even stopped strangers on the street. Nothing. Well, I wasn't the only one. The same thing happened to women all over England. They stole your children? Yes. The British government endorsed it. They believed they were giving the children a better home. How many children were taken? I don't know. Thousands. There was a terrible scandal when it came out. But by then it was too late. You were gone. And you've been here all these years? I stayed here thinking that... You might come looking for me. And here you are. The only thing that kept me going was knowing that you were being well cared for. I don't want to lie to you. There have been too many lies. The woman who adopted me had a child of her own when I was nine. She lost interest in me. I was told to call her by her first name because I wasn't her real child. Oh, those bastards, those lying bastards. I didn't protect you. I tried, Mary. I really tried. I was so angry. I, I'm still angry. It wasn't your fault. But you now, so beautiful. <laughs> mm. I never forgot you. Every night before I went to sleep, I would picture your face and imagine that you were watching over me from heaven. We lost so much. A lifetime. But we found each other. <laughs> and no one can ever take me away from you again. <laughs> yeah, I love you, Mary. <laughs> I love you too. Dear, you've exceeded my wildest dreams. <laughs> no regrets? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not a one. I've huh. been very lucky, you see. I've, I've lived my life so that I wouldn't reach the age I am now just to be crushed by regrets. Yes, I've been very lucky. Oh, sorry, my dear. These are for you. Where's Lucas? He bought the final drawings over this morning. Did he say anything? He said to wish you good luck. Oh, my dear.
If only you young people knew how very little time there really is. I started with mature plants. They're more likely to survive your mistakes. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. They call it Brassavola nodosa. They nicknamed it Lady of the Night because her flowers are more fragrant in the evening. <laughs> what a mother wants most for her child is to be happy. When I look at you, I see only sadness. Well, that'll change now that I found you. I'm not so sure. Forgive me, I uh, presume too much. You're my mother. And you're my daughter. <laughs> we must always tell each other the truth. Even if it hurts. My dad used to tell me that going through life is a little bit like sailing a boat. You know, the wind comes up, you change your course. Sometimes the current will take you where you don't want to be. And then there's a storm and the boat crashes against the rocks and you start to rebuild. Hmm. You know, when I lost you, I didn't want any more children. I could never love another man. I decided that love could only bring heartbreak. But I was wrong. You came back to me. You're young. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Don't be afraid to love, Mary. Of all the gifts you could give me, Start training her. If she has got heart, she'll give it everything she's got, even if she's lame. <laughs> I've just taken a job in Brussels. A new museum. For how long? A year, at least. Why are you here? I want you to give me another chance. The thought of never seeing you again. Meredith. You were right. I was afraid. I was... I was afraid that she wouldn't want me. Now I'm afraid that you don't want me. If by some miracle you do still want me, that you only want me for now and not forever. Don't. I'm finding you, then losing you. I, I can't go through that again. I'm 
sorry. I'm sorry, too. Will you forgive me a certain bluntness? You can tell me anything. Lucas, did you send him away? No. Ancient Celtic ritual, the sage brings good luck and keeps away evil spirits. Is it working yet? I'm not sure. I turned down the job in Brussels. Why? I want you to give me another chance. I found a woman who has great heart. And I don't want to lose her. photograph of the bride with her mother. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid anymore. I know. <laughs> 